Today we're going to be taking a deep look at Unity's new XR Hands custom gestures components that can help you detect when the user performs a hand gesture defined by a hand shape and also orientation. These powerful tools can help you author hand gestures for apps and also games that are built on top of the OpenXR plugin. So let's jump into my computer and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and create a brand new Unity project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use 2022.3.18 F1. All right, so it looks like the project I created, I'm gonna go to Window and then Package Manager, click on Plus, and we're gonna be installing the XR Hands package. Additionally, we're going to be importing the gesture samples from the XR Hands package, installing the OpenXR package, and configuring OpenXR to work with the standalone platform for Unity editor testing, as well as Android to test with physical devices. I want to create a Vulcan salute shape. Basically, we're gonna be using the Star Trek sign to be able to you know to detect that in unity and know when that happens i'm also going to be doing more of a like little gun sign basically when we're doing the gun gesture it's going to have a ray from the index finger and then when we do this that is going to trigger a gesture and the, and that's going to allow me to basically shoot a ball so we're going to be creating more of a little gun that shoots a sphere so to get started with the Vulcan Salute, let's go ahead and create two folders. So we're gonna be doing, one is one is going to be hand shapes, and then I'm gonna clone that, and then rename it to be hand poses. And we're gonna be starting with the shape because we wanna know the shapes of the fingers before we detect it. So to start, just go ahead and right click on the hierarchy and then create, and then XR. And then there's gonna be this thing called hand interactions. And then here we can say that we want to create a new hand shape. And then in this case, I'm gonna call this one the Vulcan and Salute. And then I'm gonna say shape. And then what you're gonna see though is that we have these finger shape conditions and by default, it's going to be empty. So if you think about it, when you do this sign, all the fingers are open, right? The full curl values are going to be set to zero. Also, when we're dealing with the base curl, the values are gonna be set to zero when we have the hand all the way open. So really what we need to deal with here is the spread, basically how much separation we have between the ring finger and also between the middle finger. So that's really all I need to do. And also if you look at the sign, the thumb is normally also separated from the index finger. So we wanna make sure that we also have the spread value for the thumb to be a really high number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the plus symbol here and we're gonna start with the thumb, right? That's gonna be the one where we want it to have separated. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and say finger ID is going to be the thumb. By default, that's the first value. And then the element zero is gonna tell you basically what we want to do. Do we wanna do a full curl? Do we wanna do a base curl? So in this case, I wanna do a spread. And the value that I'm gonna be designating for this, the desired value is going to be one. But I wanna have more of a range because if I have it maybe no the way extended, maybe about 70% of it, I still want to be able to capture these gestures. So you don't wanna be too close to the max. Otherwise, there's not going to be room for, you know, for any, any areas where you might have people that cannot extend their finger all the way through or, you know, there's always good to have a range better than a, a fixed number. So. In this case, I think I'm gonna do 70%, so we can do one on the desired number, and then the tolerance is going to be about 70%, well, 70%. And then the next one that I'm gonna do is going to be the middle finger. So we're gonna be adding basically a new element at this level, and then this element is going to tell you, okay, what is it that we wanna do with the middle finger? Well, I also want to have the value of spread, and I want that value to also be you know, pretty, pretty extended. That way when we do this, the thumb is extended, you know, at least 70% of it. And also the middle finger is also extended from the ring finger about 70% to 100%. So if we expand the gesture detection, which is going to be where that UI is, we can also start adding a couple of more. So there's gonna be two more in here that are currently hidden. And Unity added those, so in case that we wanted to test more, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the Vulcan Salute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy that value and then paste that value there. And then what I'm gonna do as well 
Okay, there's gonna be a label as well inside, so I want to also rename that, and then I'm also going to be renaming these, and we can just go ahead and toggle the gizmo so that we don't see that. So we're gonna have basically the ones that they provide, and then we're gonna have the Vulcan Salute, and then we're gonna have the one where we're gonna be creating a pointing gun, which we can get later. But if you notice though, as soon as I clone it, there's going to be the static hand gesture, and this is the one that I want to connect to my Vulcan Salute shape. So if you notice, it's gonna be taking a hand tracking events, also a hand shape or pose, this is cool because it allows us to take basically a raw shape. So if we wanna do this, it doesn't matter which direction it goes. It doesn't matter which orientation it goes, it's still going to detect it. But if we wanna add a pose component, then that's going to be taking into account the shape and also the orientation of our hands. So in this case, we're just gonna be adding the shape. I'll show you how we can do also the orientation. And then everything in here should be okay. You can also, if you wanted to modify this to do something with the gestures performed. There's gonna be an event here that is emitted when that gesture is recognized. Also, when the gesture ends, there's going to be an event here that gets emitted. And then also a minimum hold time. Maybe you want to set the minimum that you want to have that gesture being recognized to be 0.2 in this case, or if you want to have a gesture detection interval to be faster, you know, you can also change those two in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to be adding that to this component here. All right guys, so we got an issue with the Vulcan detection. So right now, if I were to do a Vulcan, it's going to detect it even when I have both of my hands completely open. So you can see here that it's going to detect it. And then if I stretch some of the fingers, the index, and also my pinky finger is going to also detect it. So all we really need to do, if we go under our Vulcan Salute shape, we can change and, and basically add a new condition. All right, let's try to see if we get a Vulcan Salute when we stretch all the fingers and it looks like it doesn't. So now let's do a real Vulcan salute. You can see that that's working, which is really, really cool. We can also rotate it. And in this case, I don't have any poses, so that's what I expect. I wanted to make sure that it was detected regardless of the orientation. So looks like everything is working. If I let go a little bit of basically extending the spread of my index finger, you can see that the detection goes away. So this is working really well. So what if we wanted to do the same Vulcan Salute, but basically have the palm face the same direction that I'm looking at basically when I'm doing this, not when I'm doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new hand pose to be able to do that. So we're gonna go here into hand interactions and then hand pose. And we can say it's gonna be called the Vulcan, in this case, Salute. And we can just call it pose just to keep things consistent. And then it's gonna take a hand shape. So I'm gonna say Vulcan is a hand shape. And then for the user condition, I'm going to say it's gonna be opposite to the hand to head. That way it's basically not requiring the palm to be facing my head. It's gonna be on the opposite direction. And then the value here of the tolerance is going to be set to 30. Ignore position, we can just leave that by default. If you had target conditions, you can also do that. In this case, we don't need to do that. And then what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna only assign that to the right hand. So just go ahead and drag and drop that into the hand shape or pose because that allows us to either pass in a shape or a pose. All right guys, so for the next one, what I wanna do is I want to do a gum pointing shape. So if you think about it, we're gonna have to have the thumb have a spread value, a very large spread value, so that we have basically a lot of distance between the index finger and the thumb if we're doing kind of a gun. Also, the index finger full curl is going to be all the way open, so we're gonna have basically that value also set to zero, maybe a tolerance of a, about 30%. And then all the other fingers, basically the ring, also the middle finger, and then the pinky finger can also be set to a high number because we're gonna have a full curl on all of those. So to be able to do that, let's go ahead and go back into hand shapes, and then we're gonna be creating a new one. In this case, I'm gonna go hand interactions and then shape. 
And then this one we can say this is gonna be called gun pointing shape. And then for the finger conditions, just go ahead and click on add. And then for the thumb value, I'm gonna set this one to be, to have the value of a spread. So let's go ahead and set it to spread. Then the value here though, we want this to be basically set to a number that represents that this is all the way open. So to do that, we're gonna be setting this value to be a number one. And then the tolerance in this case is gonna be probably about 70%, so we can say 0.7. And then we're gonna need another finger here that's gonna be for the index finger. In this case, we also want this one to have a full curl. I think by default, it's going to basically be set to zero, which is okay, but I wanna have a tolerance value basically overwritten. So you could leave it and it should be okay. But in my case, I want to, I want to add some, you know, a range that way we can also make sure that the gun works if we have these maybe bend it a little bit and not all the way stretch all the time. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say it's gonna be point, you know, point 0.3. So that's going to be 0 0.3 and then we're gonna need one for the, let's go ahead and add them all. We're gonna need one for the middle finger here. And then I'm also going to need one for the ring finger. And then if you hit plus, we're gonna need also one for the little finger. So for the middle finger, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's gonna be a full curl. We can set it all the way to a high number and then maybe on this one, because we wanna make sure that it does look like a gun, we can set it to be 0.8 on the tolerance. And then on the ring, we can do the same thing. We can say it's gonna be one and then, and as you guys are testing this, you can be testing this with the scene that you have in here and then you can go back and forth until you get the right values. That's normally what I did to be able to test this. So what I'm gonna do on this one though, on the little one, I'm also gonna set it to one, and then I'm also going to be setting this to be about 80%. So we're gonna have a thumb value with a spread value of one, and then it's gonna have a tolerance of 0.7, and then the full curl here on the index finger is also going to have a value of zero and then we're gonna have this to be 0.3 on the tolerance so that should allow us to do kind of a gun shape so we can do we can basically wire that up so what i'm gonna do for that though is i'm gonna go ahead and clone these two and then we can say it's gonna be gun pointing and then we can just go ahead and copy that and then paste it here and i'm also going to be renaming this so we can go into the label let's go ahead and rename it and then we can also rename this in here. So now we should have two more that we're playing with, except that we need to, on the gun pointing, we need to go ahead and associate it with the hand shape. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I can also associate it with the hand shape in here. We can go into the wrist. And then if you look at it, there's all the fingers are gonna be here. We can just go ahead and go into our tip, which is going to be in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new game object in here. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be called the aim line. So this one is going to have a line render. So if we go here and we just create a line render and then go here into the scene view, just to make sure that we can see that, so right now it's not gonna look okay because we need to change some values. So the width value here is gonna be 0 0.01. So that's going to make it, you know, more about the size of the joints that we have. And then everything else in here, we're gonna also use world space is gonna be set to false. So as soon as you do that, we can get closer in here and you're gonna see that we're gonna have a ray here coming out of our index fingertip. And then what I'm gonna do as well here on the materials, because this is missing a material, I'm just gonna assign it to this sprite default. And then by default, we can just basically set this to be hidden. That way it only happens when we're doing a gun pointing that is going to be visible. Create a new folder here, and we can just call it prefabs. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this into prefabs, that way we have it there as a prefab. Then I'm also going to be creating a new object in here. I'm just gonna say it's going to be a bullet. And then in this case, we're gonna just set it to zero, zero, zero. That way everything is you know, clear and nice. And then the size of this, we can just add here. 
we're constrained to be all axes and then it's going to be 0 0.05 all the way across that way it's smaller and then i'm also going to be adding in here a rigid body and we don't really need to make any changes to that because we're going to be controlling this with a different component so also what i'm going to do though is i'm going to go ahead and make that a prefab Okay, so now that the script is generated, let's go ahead and create a new game object in here. And then I'm just going to call it here the spanner. And then we can go ahead and associate that game object with the script that we just created. And then the prefab, though, is going to be the bullet that we just created. And then everything else should be okay. We can leave this one basically enabled by default. So if we go down to gesture detection and then we look at the left hand, you're going to see that we have a GAN pointing one, which is the one that we created. So I'm going to create a, basically two new actions that we're going to execute when gesture is performed. So when gesture is performed, I want to be able to basically enable the line render to be displayed. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say set active. I'm going to set it to true. And then whenever the gesture ends, I'm going to be making the line not visible anymore. So we're going to be going into here to game object and then making the basically invisible again. And then what I also want to do though, is I want to be able to shoot, right? But I only want to shoot whenever the gesture ends, because think about it. If we're doing this gesture with our hands, it's going to be detected. And then as soon as I do this, or I do this, it's going to shoot a ball. And that's really what I want to do. I want to do it on the gesture end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, a spanner, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to say whenever that happens, I'm going to be basically calling the shoot method. So that's going to allow me to shoot a ball every time the gesture, the initial gesture ends. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about anything that we covered today with XR Hands Gesture Recognizers, let me know in the comments. And also make sure that you subscribe so that I can make more videos like this. So thank you very much, guys.